Welcome to Drunk on Social, the symposium, where we help you stay ahead of social media trends, share the latest news, and highlight the strategies that are working to help you grow your business. Now let's join our hosts, Tristan and Jeff, in three, two, one. Welcome back to episode number 11 of the Drunk on Social, the symposium podcast where Tristan and I bring you the latest news, the latest strategies, and what you should be paying attention to in the social media world. And let me remind you, and I'm going to remind you in the end, if you're not already a member of the Drunk on Social Facebook group, this is like an ongoing thing for us, except we go a hell of a lot more in depth on this podcast. So make sure you're, you are a member of that group on Facebook. Oh, and by the way, we're also on Instagram now and YouTube. So go take a follow because we'd love to have And TikTok. You. I just have to find the username and password. How can I forget? How can I forget that we're on TikTok? I don't know, man. That's like, that's your bread and butter. Right, right, exactly. Tristan, where do you want to start this week, my friend? You know, I want to start with YouTube because they just made a power move and, and not a lot of people are, are paying attention to this. And, and we'll tell you why it's important. Number one, YouTube came up with shorts for everyone, opened it up about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So now you can check it out on your phone. It's there. But the cool thing is that they're allocating a hundred million dollars for YouTube shorts creators. Just for that alone. That's it. Not for anything, not for regular YouTube. And what does that mean? It means that they're going to be now competing against, we told you last time, Snapchat's doing that a million dollars a day competition. And I mean, I think they beat Jeff TikTok because I think I might have like 10 cents so far on mine. I, 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 bet, might. I bet you got more than that. I know it's probably like 40 bucks. Let me check. While we're doing this, but dude, 40 bucks in comparison to the amount of money I can make on shorts, no, not even close. And I think the important thing isn't that we're going to make money on it as business owners. It's the fact that it's going to drive more eyes on there because creators are going to be paid more to create consistent content. That's the key to this, right? That's why you have Twitter. That's why you have Clubhouse. Facebook, Instagram, all of these companies coming in and saying, hey, we're going to pay our creators from now on. What do you think of that, dude? Yeah, I think this is really important. And, and just for the record, I have $41.28 in my TikTok creator account. Um, <laughs> uh, I've, been, I've been earning about a penny a day for the last longest period of time. There's a random days here and there. But yeah, I mean, the, the point is, is, is yeah, it's... It, I, I don't think this is is necessarily important to the majority of us, other than maybe the Tristans and, and the Brad McCallums and the Ken Posex. Uh, but what is important to note is that, like we always say with any platform, if they are allocating resources for creators or because uh, they're wanting you to pay attention to a certain you know uh, strategy in the platform or a certain new effect or anything like that, the point is use it because if you use it, the odds are the algorithm is going to favor you, which is going to show you to more people, which is going to potentially grow your audience. And that's the whole point of YouTube, right? So I think that for those of you who might be like me, who are using Reels and TikTok at a very high and consistent level, this is easy. Just repurpose it, right? And then you've got the Tristans who are like, I'm so focused on YouTube, I'm going to start creating shorts organically there. And then I'm like, hey, Tristan, take your shorts and put them over to TikTok. Yeah. It's easy. Just repurpose it, right? I think that's the bigger point here. Dude, that is a very solid point, man. Wherever you're starting your journey on social media, make sure that you can repurpose that in other places. Great, great point, Jeff. And I think we need a plan to that, though. A lot of us are just like, oh, I just posted, done. Right? Yeah. That's well, actually, you know what? That's a, actually a good topic that I don't think we've discussed on this podcast much, and I'm totally going to digress for a second. Oh. And that is so many people ha have the mindset, and, and I haven't heard anybody say this in a while, but I feel like they're thinking it that, well, I don't want to annoy my, I don't want to annoy the audience by posting the same thing in too many places. Mm -hmm. um, and I think this applies to not only cross posting across platforms, but also posting something to 
multiple groups on Facebook. You, I think you understand what I'm explaining there. What is your opinion on that topic? Well, I think first we have to gravitate to one place that we that we feel most comfortable with, but it can't stop there. I think once we get comfortable enough with that one place, then we should look at and say, well, we should also be maybe repurposing that video, that even that post that we did and place it on another social media outlet. And you and I do that a lot. I mean, we repurpose a lot of our videos and throw them onto other places and even our posts, right? As for even in, in newsletters, in Instagram, TikTok, now I'm doing Pinterest, right? So the only place that I'm not repurposing or even active in is Snapchat. I just use their filters. So dude, I, I agree with you. I think it takes a mindset shift because a lot of people are like, oh, that's a lot of extra work, but is it really? Well, and that's the thing. And, and actually it was uh, Nick the other day who posted in Drunk on Social asking where he, where people suggest or what, what platform he suggests or people suggest to use for, uh, you know, like a, like a posting, um, I don't know what you want to even want to call it. You know, just one of those platforms that will post, you put a post in there and it'll post it out to multiple places. And I commented that I'm that guy who's still doing it the old fashioned way, which is copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And there's, there's two trains of thought to that. One, is it really that much work? I mean, coming from somebody who's doing it, I'm going to tell you it's not that much work. It takes a few minutes, literally, right? The first, typing out the first caption and everything, that takes the most amount of time. And then all I'm doing is copying and pasting it. But I think people feel like, well, I'm going to annoy people by doing that. But my, my attitude is this, is that, it, first of all, most of our audience spends most of their time on one platform. They're not like you and I that are bouncing around to each one, checking things out. If you spend all of your time in LinkedIn, that's where you're spending most of your time. If you spend all your time on Facebook, that's where you spend your time. And so if you're not multi-purposing it, you're just lessening the number of eyeballs that are seeing your stuff. And the same applies to Facebook groups. I mean, there are some people that on their feed or on their notifications, they're seeing lab code agent notifications all the time when they're paying attention to them, but they may not be paying attention to real estate mastery. Or they may not be paying attention to drunk on social or any of the other groups that I post to. And so I just realized what or I, I figure what, what, what do I have to lose? It's so it's, it's, it's so non uh, threatening. That's what social media is. It's, it's not, I'm not knocking on your door or calling your phone. I'm just posting. And if you don't want to see it, you don't want to pay attention. You scroll past, but all I'm doing is increasing the chances that I'm going to touch more people and so I don't know that I'm necessarily right or wrong, but you can't argue with the growth that I've had. And I, so I just look at that. It's like, well, I'm clearly touching a lot of people. It's clearly working. My business is growing. I'm going to keep doing what's working. And um, I don't know. I, I think a lot of people would disagree with me without any basis. And I'm just going off the basis of simply it's working and my phone continues to ring. Dude, I, I agree with you on that. I think you're right. I'm glad we brought that up because that's a topic that I think is actually very important for everybody who's going to use social media. You know, one of the other things that you brought up a long time ago, and it was on a video, and I want to go into it because there was a reason, a recent study done on YouTube. That's the one I found. I was looking for it and looking for it, and I found it. It came out May 9th, okay? And it's this. YouTube shares new insights into the most commonly used opening lines for YouTube clips. Say, and that Say that again. So, you know, the opening lines, remember that one video that you sit, that you did that said, Hey guys, everybody starts oh, off. Hey guys, your hook. That? Yeah. Your hook. Right. Look. So that's what they're referring to. They broke it down into like the, these four categories and said, well, what is it? What do fitness, the fitness vertical, what does that usually start up with? What's that? What's that opening line? Most of them are what's up. And it's second is, Hey guys, right? <laughs> Check this out. Travel is, hey guys, is third, but not by far. It's good morning, not bad. What's up, which is very popular, and hey guys. And then in tech, you have ladies and gentlemen, and then second is hey guys. <laughs> so, which is weird. And then with gaming and that general teaching, education, let me show you what I'm doing. 
hey guys is number one and look the in the article which i'll send to you yes. and i will post it into this yes please but in that article the person who wrote it said hey you know i asked my son and i asked a few other people what they thought of it and they really didn't care but i mean we won't really know until like true research is done on this is it something that pe people are so just used to and they'll skip over or would it make an actual difference right i don't i don't know man i just brought it up because i remember your video yeah. that said hey guys <laughs> and i remember it clearly as a way as a way not to do it it's a good point because so, so my thinking is this, and I'll, I'll use, I'll use a great example. Uh, there was this, this, I call him a kid cause he's, he was young at the time. He messaged me on LinkedIn. This is a message, not a video, but the same thing applies. And I, and I, and I actually replied to it because the message was so unique and different. You're so used to glossing over messages from somebody trying to solicit business because they say the same thing. Ironically, I just replied to another kid uh, with an investment firm today on, on LinkedIn, who's sent me five messages, very canned. And I actually just replied today. I said, can I give you some advice? And I'm going to give this kid advice. I don't want his business. I'm just going to give him advice. And um, I believe that whether it's a video, I agree with what you just said. Like, I think pe people naturally will say, ah, I don't really care. But here's what I will say is that when you do gloss over that video and they fire off something that you weren't expecting, or when you read a message or a title to an email or a message on LinkedIn that you weren't expecting, it grabs your attention and you're more likely to stick with it. Now, I, again, I don't think people are cognizant of that, but I, it, if and when they do do some studies on this, which they will, I will bet a large sum of my, I'll bet all of my Dogecoin that uh, I am going Careful to now. Dogecoin. Whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. Maybe, maybe Shibu Inu, but not Dogecoin. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's know. such a powerful, it is so powerful. And so many people just don't, you know, you know, I teach this stuff all the time and it's like, stop and think before you go to your, do your video, just stop for just a minute and think about how you can lead with a good line. That's going to be attention grabbing. Yeah. At the end of the day, maybe it doesn't matter to the masses, but if you can pick up one or two or three or four extra uh, some people paying attention, dude, that could be a life changing for your business. That's true. And you know, when we sat down with D Rock, the one you missed, damn it, or you got invited to with yeah, us. Sorry. sorry about that. Um, <laughs> that one. He said, "You know what we do, Tristan?" He goes, "Every every every shoot we do with Gary, we." We have him do the video, which is cool and all. And then we have him do an intro for every single state. So yes, yes. he told me that too. Yep. Dude, how brilliant is that? You yep. want to forget, hey guys, it's hey California, hey New Mexico, hey Texas, all of a sudden that changes. That's powerful. Yeah. And that that's where I was getting at. So, you know, now that I had this conversation with you, um, it does, I guess it does matter. There you go. It does matter, man. Good, good brainstorming it, it, session. Well, it does. And here's the, again, here's the thing. The masses won't do it. And so that's where the opportunity lies in differentiation. Just be a little bit different and, and just wait and see what happens. Cause remember it only, if you're a real estate agent, for example, and you capture the attention of somebody who turns out to be a whale of a referral to you that all of a sudden owns a bunch of properties and refers the hell out of you because they, you grab their, that's, life-changing it's all it's just a small tweak to what you're already doing just just do it dude i love where we went on this but yeah, we way. totally went off base i love this i love this all right let's go to twitter and i'm just going to read the headline to you twitter is reportedly working on a new set of paid tweet options under a monthly subscription model again the whole thing about subscription about paying the creators this is interesting. I mean, they've only got, if I remember correctly, Twitter has 400 million users, different than visitors, right? 400 million monthly users. Visitors have got 6 billion visitors, which is insane. But the fact that they're doing this as a monthly subscription, I think it's, I think it's an interesting move. It says, here's, here's what they're going to do. Twitter will soon look to launch called Twitter Blue which will enable users to pay a fee of $2.99 per month 
to access a range of these next level Twitter functions. Hmm. What do you think? Just offhand, w would you pay three bucks to, to do this? It depends how much I'm using Twitter, I guess. All right. Uh, which, which actually I think Twitter is very underrated, by the way. Um, underrated for the, the reason that m there's a lot of people that love that platform because it's, because it's different, because it's more headline driven, uh, it's more news driven and because it's different. There's no draw. There's less drama there. Well, actually it's entertaining drama. I guess there is drama there. Cause let's, yeah. let's be honest. Our former president was known for being there. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. I, yeah. I, I think anytime there's opportunity, you, you shouldn't turn your head on it. I think it's a good trial. I think this is where, this is where I think a lot more social platforms will, will head into because they're going to stop relying more uh, less on the Apples and the Googles now that Apple is cutting it off and saying, hey, you're not going to be able to track your, your uh, transparency has to be more open, right? We need to know a lot more from you. So this, if you're going to have like new added features, if you're paying for it, dude, look, I would pay for extra added features for Instagram and Facebook. If it was like a buck or two a month. If yeah, you're giving yeah. me more features, I'll be like, dude, I'll to I'm totally down with that, mm -hmm. right? And that's an extra way for these companies to say, you know what? Maybe we don't need to use everybody's data and track them and showcase all this crap. So this could be another avenue that we're not seeing. And I think Twitter's got something here, dude, because look, look at the possible add-ons for $2.99. Here we go. I'm going to read them to you, okay? Undo send. That's, you know, that's kind of cool. Custom color options. Okay. Interesting. Advanced video publishing tools, kind of like uh, TikTok, right? Profile badges. That's kind of cool. If you're going to give me access to more badges, that, that I might pay for, uh, especially if I'm running a whole community and you give me more badges if I'm going to pay, right? Mm -hmm. Auto replies, which could be good depending on how deep it goes. Social listening, what it means is more insights into your tweet engagement and discussion around your Twitter handle. That could be cool. If you have a massive Twitter following, like you and I, let's say we go on Instagram and Instagram says, hey, we're going to give you deeper insights on if somebody looked at your profile, the demographics of who's looking. I'm like, oh, I'll pay an extra two bucks for this. Mm -hmm. right? That could be good. And a whole bunch of other little things like that. But dude, the point is, that they could be opening up the door for Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and all these other social platforms to do something similar. Do you remember a month ago on one of our podcasts, we brought up that Facebook was going to start doing a newsletter. They're going to bring in like um, minority journalists to do these newsletters and pay them. Do you remember that? No, you don't. Okay. Well, <laughs> there was... There was that that Facebook is going to start doing and that that could be it was a subscription type model. So I could start seeing this kind of other social platforms testing this out. What do you think? I love it. I, 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 yeah, I think you're right. I think it's an interesting that Twitter of all platforms is on to something that others are going to be copying. Who owns Twitter? Did um, that oh, dude that what was hold on. He's the guy I, I actually did research on because he also owns square um and he's a dual ceo i can't see. believe that they haven't been um you know bought by one of the bigger boys there we go jack patrick dorsey uh or dorsey he's um uh, as a ceo of twitter i don't know who how much per or what percentage he owns but he has twitter and square those are the two main ones that he runs um that's cool i don't know who who ha who owns part of twitter but He's the CEO and the creator. I mean, obviously they found their niche and that's what, that's what makes Twitter so unique and special. Uh, because again, I, the people that go there, go there for a very unique reason that is, isn't provided by other, the other social platforms. And that, that in and of itself just makes it super valuable in my opinion. You know, I'm still waiting for somebody to come out with a, a different version of Clubhouse where they have like these short kind of like, I don't know if it's like a podcast, but let's say you have a message, Jeff, 
and you want to throw it onto just verbally, right? Audio. Mm -hmm. And it's like a 10 to 30 second message for the world. And that's the social media. That's all it is, right? You can put a picture behind it. It's like an audiogram, just a bunch of audiograms that people could just throw up there and just listen to. Go next, next. It could be announcements. It can be news. It could be motivation, whatever it is. Nobody's really hit on that. I'm just waiting for somebody to it's do that. Interesting. It's almost like those, you know, 5 a.m. club type calls that are clearly recorded. Um, you know, sorry, <laughs> but it's true. It's true. Um, but but it's the it's the it's the it's the principle behind it. The point is, is you can totally, you could you. I think you're onto something, and I think maybe we should stop recording right now and go invent this ourselves. You know, do you know anybody who can help us do this? Because I think that might be, I mean, I, I'm willing to throw some money at that one. Uh, well, I don't know. But, you know, hey, I tell you what, there might be a listener right now who says, I can help execute this. I think we should. I mean, I, I think you're onto something like it's almost like a, a, a short form podcast platform. Yeah. That, and, then, and then you'd have categories like you know, categories of motivation and business and news. sports and fitness and new. Yeah. Yes. All that. Yeah, that's, that's it. Ooh, I wish, I wish we had the time to do that. I mean, uh, if, if we can find somebody who can at least set up the back to that, we can, we have an audience, you know, it's almost like it would be an influencer platform essentially. But then again, you could also go like micro geographic and, and then all of a sudden you could, you could be, targeted to putting out messages specific to your community and then people yeah. just go in to scroll to see what's happening it's all yeah it's like twitter but it's oh gosh this is man yeah, that's what i've been waiting for somebody to do but i've never seen it done i'm like why but now that i think i remembered it after clubhouse took off i'm like you know clubhouse did such a good job but it's still it's eating up my time like you know how much i hate just sitting in on crap right yep. so imagine this 30 second, maximum, maybe a minute, actually 30 seconds, 30 seconds or less. Just tell me what it is. Motivate me. Give me some news. I want to know about baseball, basketball news, what's going on in social, whatever done. I, I was thinking, I was thinking five minutes or less. Oh man, that might be too long. For or me. maybe three minutes. I, I think 30 seconds isn't enough. Okay. I, um, that, I think 60 good. seconds is maybe enough, but that's tough. So I, I'd at least give it two it allows you to put a good, powerful message out in a short amount of time. And so maybe you do do it 60 seconds because it forces people. It's like my TikTok strategy. I take a otherwise two or three minute video. I condense it down and get the message across much quicker. And people seem to like it. Like it's bite-sized content, yeah. right? And you can, it gives you the, the ability. You know how TikTok is amazing at editing? Well, here it allows you to edit the voice just as easy. Right with intro, outro, super quick. And if you want to go for two minutes, like those people who say, Well, I need an extra minute. Yeah, sure. You can pay us a dollar a month. Yeah. Or or you, you know, yeah, you, you gotta just gotta figure it out. That's why it's gonna be for the people who can figure it out. Did and we do just it. have a, a brainstorming session again? Dude, we what did. Is this? We did. We did. You know what you could also do though? You could do part one, part two, part three. Like oh, if you oh, want to oh. hear the rest. Dude. Yeah. I'll be there all day. Oh, if this is like man. a pot. Then it's a podcast. There should be a limit. I, can, I don't want more than three parts. I can already sense a, yeah, I can already see a, a, a $50 billion valuation coming on this real quick. Well, if you can find somebody, I'm down. Let's do it. And you heard it. You got to help us go find somebody now. Yeah. Somebody who can uh, help us develop it. I think I might have a, a couple of guys. A couple Hopefully, of guys. you know what? That's what we need to do. This is episode 11. Don't forget that. We might need to forward this to the right ears. And, uh, and, and, and put this in front of the right people. Just that clip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, this is, that's good. That is good short form content here too. I don't know. Maybe we don't want to share this. Maybe we just want to stop this podcast and tell our editors don't share that piece of this because we just gave somebody a great idea. Uh, hopefully we gave ourselves the idea. Jeff. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Jeff, what else do you got for us? Because that's all I had on my list. You had one more thing. You yeah, said. the last thing I wanted to share were, uh, was an interesting article about the uh, 10 e-commerce trends. And the reason I wanted to share this is because typically we talk specifically to real estate. And this is probably, it's still very relevant because the statistics apply, but it's very relevant to just 
e-commerce in general. So it doesn't, you know, as you know, the drunk on social is not designed to be towards any one platform. It's any sales professional, any business owner. And, and you should be paying attention to this because uh, this matters. I mean, I'll just, I'll just run through this real quick. So online sales growth, uh, the headline says online, online sales growth is unstoppable. Uh, in other words, it's going to go from uh, 4.9 trillion in 2021 this year to 6.4 trillion in 2024. Think about that. That doesn't sound like a lot. 1.5. You're just thinking 1.5 trillion, Dude, not million, a- not billion. Yes. E-commerce. What does that tell you? It tells you that traditional means of sales is going to continue to die off. And those who embrace e-commerce, the internets are going to succeed uh, by far. Uh, e-commerce penetration rates are forecast to increase 15% in 2020 uh, to 25% by 2025. It just kind of goes along the same the same path. Uh, mobile shopping is growing. I mean, I'm, I'm a testament to that. I did barely go to stores anymore. Uh, sales made via mobile devices are on the rise. It will total 3.79, 3.8 trillion in 2022. If you're not on mobile, where are you? Um, young consumers obviously are changing the business landscape. This is what you should be paying attention to. Uh, 67% have spent more money online uh, than before the pandemic. Whoa. That's, that's right. That's right. I just um, opened up the door, man. Big time. Right? Uh, the pandemic definitely just sent us into the future faster than we were going. That's all it did. That's insane. That That's all it did. Yep. I mean, you know, it talks about, you know, the e-commerce features of Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok specifically. I think if you're selling anything online, whether it's yourself or a product, being relevant and visible on those three platforms is critical. Um, this is interesting. Environmental topics influence buyers. 39% of digital consumers say poor environmental records impact their purchasing decisions. In other words, if your company or product has a bad, you know, like there's an article about it because you were, you know, uh, l- you know, your waste was flowing into a river. Mm-hmm. that's going to impact whether people buy your product. You know, this is funny. My wife and I were just arguing the other day uh, because she likes to buy Dawn soap. You know why she likes to buy Dawn dish soap? Why? Because there's a little duck, a baby <laughs> duckling on the marketing, which, which, which is a representation that they <laughs> donate money to animals, I guess. And I told oh. her, I'm like, come on. Like, do you really think... And, and, I'm, and so then I went to Sam's. And this is a true story. I went to Sam's. I saved $7 and bought a bigger thing of the Sam's product. And she was genuinely pissed at me for not buying Dawn with the duck on it because she wants to support animals. And I'm like, that is marketing. Like they own you. Like they've, they've maybe they do, maybe they don't. But that makes sense. I mean, for people that care about that, That's, I wouldn't have thought of that. That makes a lot of sense. So for now on, uh, just put a little baby duckling on all of your marketing material and you will sell more homes. Should we now. change our raccoon logo to a duck? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good point. Raccoons are not exactly uh, warm and cuddly <laughs> animals in most people's opinion. <laughs> and they're crazy and obnoxious. That's the point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the, the desire to shop with independent businesses is up 57% of consumers. And I think that also has been driven by the pandemic because so many businesses were forced to shut down. It's like, we want to now support the small independent business owner. Uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, take that for what it's worth. You're going to like this one. Augmented reality is going to transform how we shop. Uh, 120,000 stores in 2022 will be using augmented reality technologies, offering a much richer buying experience. In other words, like, you know, you're going to be able to like transpose yourself into that shirt. Right. Dude. I mean, how cool is that? Right. Um, I want that. Yep. Now. That. And in other words, if you are selling a product like that, this faster you incorporate augmented reality, the, 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 the better chance you have to grow. Um, That's going to be huge. The last two are personalization is the future. More than 50% of shoppers say that a personalized online experience is important. Um, That's kind of goes without saying, but is important. And visual commerce is on the rise. The global image recognition market 
is set to hit 81.88 billion by 2026. I'm not even really sure what that means. The global image recognition market. Um, hold on. I'm taking a look at what you're taking a look at now. Uh, the global image recognition market uh, is set to hit. I'm assuming that it's kind of like, do you remember where when you go to Amazon and you pop open Amazon and you scan whatever the image is in, in a store, like you're at Target, you scan it through and then it pops it up. It's like, hey, yeah, we found it and it's cheaper over here. Ooh. That's what I'm assuming it's saying, but I could be wrong, buddy. That's where the Amazons of the world are going to have um, an advantage. But I think the point is, is those, those, 10, those 10 trends are very, very relevant and be paying attention. And if you are in any market of sales, uh, it's, 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 this is going to be critical to evolve. And if you don't, you will absolutely be left behind. Dude, a hundred percent. And you know what, the more that I think about that, that actually makes a lot more sense with the image recognition. If we're able to touch on more products because they're uploaded into systems that recognize those images, that means we'll be able to access better prices overall. So mm -hmm. uh, that, that makes a lot more sense. I like that. I like that. That's, that's where the Walmarts and, and, the, and the Amazons will have a distinct advantage because uh, volume allows them to be a cheaper price, you know? Yeah, dude. I'm down with that. And that's, that was a great way to end this one. Yeah. This is probably our longest podcast episode ever and probably the most fruitful. <laughs> Dude, honestly, I just texted a couple of people for us. So, <laughs> so you know, <laughs> see, see if, if you're like one of the three people that listen to this podcast, now you see why we do it. Not necessarily for you, for our own selves here. This, you know, that was, that was pretty brilliant. <laughs> that was a great idea. I absolutely agree. Brother, it's been fun until episode number 12. Unbelievable. Oh. I thought we were episode seven. That's crazy. 11. This is 11. I know, but I thought it was seven. It's crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah. No, we're, we're, uh, we're blazing. We're blazing ahead. Good job. Hey, don't forget, make sure you let, let uh, your friends and colleagues know, share us. Don't keep us a secret and don't forget, join the Facebook group. That's the OG. Go follow us on Instagram. Go follow us on YouTube where we're going to be creating. Not only are you going to get this, the full episode, you're going to get micro content. Oh, and by the way, we're on TikTok too. Go check us out. And who knows where the hell else we're going to be next. Uh, in is, is, is consistently taking us new places. And we look forward to seeing you all there. And until episode number 12, have a wonderful week. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening to Drunk on Social, the symposium. We are here to help you take your business to new levels through social media. Make sure to subscribe to get updates on new episodes and come join us on our Drunk on Social Facebook page. And as always, make sure you leave us a great review on your favorite podcast app. Feedback and likes are very much appreciated.